I'm here in Tempe, Arizona at the first house 3D printed by Habitat for Humanity. Now we visited another house 3D printed by Habitat for Humanity in Virginia by the Alquist team. This one was done also with a Cobalt printer but this time by the Perry team whose headquartered, uh, American headquarters is in Houston, Texas. So they printed this house. You can see the printed layers. We have visited it before. But last time they had only finished the layers and now they're adding that upper portion. It seems to be lofted, so you're getting a lot more extra ceiling height than just the angle of the roof. You can especially see that from this side. I'll show you in the drone footage in a minute. We'll also take a look inside before the sun sets. There's not too much light left. The really cool thing about this project is there's actually four homes being built here and the other ones are being built traditionally by Habitat for Humanity. They're a very experienced home builder, so they have tons of subcontractor relationships. They'll have a realistic price from a qualified contractor. It'll be a great comparison because it's right next to this 3D printed house. So you'll really be able to see the costs for the region and apply them specifically for this technology versus stick built. Here we get an angle of the old house building method and the new house building method. Now, it was probably a little bit easier for them to do what they already had experience with, but it's always good to continue experimenting and trying new things because you might discover efficiencies that the market hadn't realized before. And when that happens, things can really change quickly. This project is particularly great because Habitat for Humanity is a not-for-profit that's willing to share their costs. When we see the cost analysis of this project, it's going to be an eye-opener for where we actually stand. When there's loads of people thinking about $10,000 houses, we'll find out the realities from people who are willing to just be honest. On this side, the part they added after the print almost doubles the height of the building. Here they have one PVC pipe and two copper pipes that go from the interior to the exterior of the house. It's not difficult to do pass-throughs in this concrete. You can either make the hole while it's wet simply by hand, or you can cut into it later it's strong and it's not prone to cracking so you just have to be a little bit careful but you can really manipulate it however you want i hope there's not too much reverb from all the exposed concrete but this ceiling is huge and the ribs in the middle make it really unique unlike any printed house i've seen before i also really appreciate this printed centerpiece that's going to end up being like a breakfast bowl these high windows are going to let in a bunch of light and they make the home feel more traditional rather than just being surrounded by all the layers. These printers are pretty accurate, but they're not completely perfect. As you can see, the layers have a slight differential between how far each one comes out by a few millimeters. We saw this last time, but now they've made quite a bit of progress with these chases. They've run the electrical in, you see where you have the plug and then the switch all the way up to the light. That's basically the three levels of electrical in the house. It's the lights, the switches, and the outlets. So now they have that going on, they'll finish this out and then drywall over it and finish it to be a regular house with paint. You won't even be able to see the walls behind it. A lot of projects, we see them snake the wires inside the walls having an inner layer and an outer layer, but here they decided to just leave this chase conveniently. Hopefully they remember where it is when they add the drywall in case they ever want to change it in the future. I guess it's not too difficult though, it's just vertical of the outlet, so if you think. Here are the other two homes under construction. We'll really get such a great example of how three regular homes and one printed home compare to each other. This isn't something to be overly critical about. We understand it's the beginning of an emerging industry. It's extremely brave of the companies pursuing this technology to put their money up front for the R&D costs it takes to really discover all the efficiencies that will make this technology viable in the future. Many of you know I've visited almost every 3D printed building and 3D printed construction company in the world, but you don't know how I did it. Today I'm gonna to tell you that story. In the beginning, I had graduated college and I was working a construction labor job. I had started my channel and began making videos, but I was nowhere near a full-time YouTuber. 
and I wasn't generating income from my online platform. I saved up some money from my construction job, $8,000 and I drove to Texas to Icon in order to film their 3D printed house. It took three months to finally be able to film that project but I was relentless and it turned out somebody who worked for them was a fan of my YouTube channel despite only having a couple videos from Wind Sun in China and SQ4D in New York. They ultimately let me film. I'm really grateful to my friend Nick, who's the CEO of a startup called Truck Bucks out in Austin, because he let me stay with him for that three months while I was waiting for Icon to finally open their doors to me so I could film an interview ultimately with their CTO. So after that, companies were willing to let me visit with them. 20 Additive Manufacturing even hosted me in Canada, and then I was hosted by many companies in Europe. The key was Bitcoin. I made an investment in Bitcoin last year right around the election when it was $13,000. I put around $5,000 in and I gradually sold as it climbed up to $60,000. This funded my YouTube journey for the growth stage before it was generating revenue. Now I'm able to do consulting and get YouTube ad revenue and sponsorship deals, but before I was really just spending my savings and that was actually enough because of my Bitcoin invest. Recently I'm extremely proud to announce I've partnered with Coinbase and you can sign up with the link below in the description. Right now Coinbase is offering an incredible program where you can learn about different smaller cryptos and then earn them for passing little quizzes about the stuff you learned about the various cryptocurrencies. And you're not stuck in the little cryptocurrencies they give you. You can transfer them into other cryptos. Coinbase makes cryptocurrencies easy. And with the 0.9% CPI read we just had today, you should definitely consider Bitcoin as a hedge. I personally think everybody should own at least 1% of their portfolio in Bitcoin. If you're aggressively trying to pursue something for the future, let's say you want a half a million dollar 3D construction printer, but you only have a hundred thousand saved up, I really believe that if you invest in Bitcoin, it could take two or three years, four years, five years, maybe even ten years, but that hundred thousand dollars will be more than enough in the future to get you started with serious equipment. So if you have the time and the patience, Bitcoin can be a great liquid asset to diversify into. There's also a lot of other coins offered on Coinbase, but we won't get into that complicated stuff on this channel. Anyway, sign up for that in the link in the description to support my channel. And I'm super grateful that Coinbase has become the second partnership sponsorship that we have on this channel. Hopefully we get many more in the future and I can continue to explore these incredible projects. Thank you guys for all your support. I really appreciate everyone who's liking and subscribing to my videos. It keeps me motivated and it keeps the algorithm working in my favor, growing the channel so that I can do bigger things in the future.